Hello. Today, I'd like to talk to you about some research into how you can be a happier, more positive person. Personally, I'm quite happy. I like my job, love my family, and I have a few things that I enjoy doing in my free time. These things all put together make me happy to wake up in the morning. Some people, though, and I guess you all know at least one, maybe even you are one, are a bit, well, depressing to be around. They always seem to have a problem that they can't solve. They're always complaining about this and that. They are often bored and want you to take pity on them. If you're not careful, it's those people who can drag your good mood into a bad mood. Now, researchers at the University of California, Berkeley, collated some research into how to be happy. What a lovely thing to do. So basically, I'll describe uh, some of the techniques that anyone can use to improve their feelings of self-worth. Self, self-worth, sorry. Their, their overall happiness. The first technique is um, writing a, a diary or a journal. Apparently, 15 minutes spent each day writing about your feelings can reduce symptoms of depression, stress and anxiety and improve your immune system so that you get fewer illnesses like colds. It can also improve your performance at work. This seems to make sense, as if you're not ill, less depressed and less anxious, you will be, I guess, more productive. Some people may claim that allowing your negative feelings to burst out in a a meltdown of shouting and screaming is a good way to, let's say, let off steam. But actually, it's not. Researchers at the University of North Carolina found that letting out your anger and frustrations in short bursts of emotion can actually make your mood worse. If you think about it, that makes sense. The person who gets really angry in public will probably feel like a bit of a fool afterwards, which will make them feel even worse. The second point, and this is such a little thing that it takes no time at all. You should make an effort to be kind. Acts of kindness, for example, helping someone who needs help. Let me give you an example. Last Christmas I helped a complete stranger to buy a gift for her nephew as she had no idea what to buy him. I was with my kids of a similar age to her nephew at the time, so she thought I could be of use. Another example, and one which I have not done, is to pay for the drink of the person behind you in the queue at a coffee shop. I do remember sitting outside a coffee shop with my kids during a bicycle ride last summer and a group of girls who were hiking arrived at the coffee shop. They didn't buy anything, they just sat at a table eating some food and having a cold drink. I had bought a a, a huge pot of tea for me and the kids, which we only drank about half of, so I offered it to the hikers. They were incredibly grateful and I felt good about myself as a result. Random acts of kindness make us feel good about ourselves, obviously. In fact, Michael Norton at the Harvard Business School claims that people who spend a bigger proportion of their income on others tend to be far happier in the long run than those spending their income on themselves. The third point is perhaps a little more obscure. Perhaps not every day, but occasionally, you should think about your life without a close friend or partner. Although that thinking process might make you feel a a little bit sad in in the very short term, in 2008, Ku et al. in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology concluded that thinking about losing someone who means a lot to you actually gives you a mood boost later on, i.e. you feel much better later in the day. The researchers hypothesized that this process stops you from taking people for granted. I should also point out 
that large numbers of studies have concluded that people who regularly say thank you have increased life satisfaction. The fourth piece of advice is to have a purpose to your life. That means that you should have a meaning or reason to your life. One way of doing this is to simply look through some old pictures to remind yourself of the things that make your life meaningful. Perhaps an excellent holiday with friends or family, or a great achievement, your high school graduation photo, a prize-winning sports team photo that you were a part of, something, something like that. This sort of activity, looking through pictures, apparently helps you to accept more recent failures or disappointments and to look at life as a, as a bigger picture. When people say you'll feel better in the morning, when you're feeling down, they are probably right, but you can certainly help yourself by reliving the better moments of your life. Evidence for this comes from Steger et al. in 2003. The fifth point is amazingly simple to do, and it is simply to look at something that makes you go, wow. Imagine a beautiful sunset, or a clear sky at night with the stars twinkling, or a magnificent church or castle, a glorious view over some countryside. In a study by Rudd et al. in 2012, the participants in a series of experiments said that they felt that they had more time available, were less impatient, were more willing to volunteer their time to help others, preferred experiences over material products, and reported greater life satisfaction when they had viewed something that made them feel awe, or in other words, something that made them say, wow. So that gives us uh, things to do from Monday to Friday. So let's go to the weekend now with idea number six. Now, obviously, we all do things that give us pleasure. It might be a, <laughs> yeah, it might be a glass of wine with a meal or a glass of cognac after a meal or that first strong coffee in the morning. However, after a period of time, the enjoyment you felt when you first started the activity starts to wear off. The activity becomes less pleasurable. It becomes just something that you do. Normal, mundane, not very exciting. If you go without the activity for a few days or a week, when you do it again, the activity is once again more enjoyable. So how can we maintain the enjoyment or pleasure from these little things we do yet take for granted? Well, instead of just drinking your coffee in the morning or just eating one of your favourite foods, take a little more time over it. Concentrate on the flavour. Make sure you cannot be distracted by your phone. Indulge your senses, the smell, the taste, the look. This is generally called mindfulness and has been shown in numerous studies to make you feel less stressed and more relaxed. Finally, number seven. This is about how we often spend too much time thinking about the past and especially the past that did not work out very well, the failures, the disappointments, or the things that make us feel guilty. Dwelling on the negative events of the past will, fairly obviously, make us more unhappy and more likely to do the same bad things in the future. So the advice is to spend some time creating good feelings about yourself. I've got to be honest, that one sounds a bit too you know, happy-clappy for me, a bit too sort of saccharine sweet. But try it if you think it might work. So to conclude then, I've described for you seven ways that you can feel happier and better about yourself. And when you do feel happier and more content with your life, the more successful you should be. Hooray! So, thank you very much. That's the end of the talk.